Hello, hello. Welcome to today's video. I am here smack dab in the middle of launch week. This week, I released my long awaited and anticipated Hobby to Pro toolkit. And so I wanted to share a little bit about that. Like, what is Hobby to Pro toolkit? Who is it for? What's included? And why might you want to consider jumping in on this deal now rather than later? So let's dive in. I want to share with you what the heck Hobby to Pro Toolkit even is, and really, more importantly, how this came to be. Let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb because that'd be a good idea, right? Okay, so if you're watching here live, jump into the chat. If you're watching the replay, just put a two in the comment section so I know you're a replay watcher. I still want to hear from you. I still want to have your questions and dive into this with you today. So Hobby to Pro Toolkit. First off, what the heck is this, right? Hi, Manny. Thanks for jumping the chat. Okay, so Hobby to Pro Toolkit in a quick summary Cliff Notes version. These are the proven tools, templates, resources, and checklists for you to confidently take your photography business from a side hustle hobby to pro, meaning professional, charging real prices, getting profit in your business, and not wasting so much time on the back end. And so when I sat there and I was thinking a few months ago about what the next product was going to be in my product suite for photographers to really help them get out of their own way, to save time, to reach success faster, I kept feeling like there was this gap right here where uh, there are so many photographers that say, I just, I really, really want to get my business off the ground. I really want to go pro. I really want to start profiting. Um, I'd love to quit my day job or my part-time job, but I just don't know how to do it. And quite frankly, they're overwhelmed. And so when I started thinking along those lines, I started thinking, okay, let me get back into the mindset of being a brand new photographer, having a day job, being in school, and really wishing I could go pro in my photography business. And honestly, it didn't take much work for me to just remember exactly what that felt like and how it felt like you could see success like on the other side of this like fence and everybody else had figured it out but me. And I just like wanted to know how they got there. I just wanted to know how they were booking these clients, how, what were they doing in their businesses to charge the prices they were charging, all of it, right? And so Basically, Hobby to Pro is my answer to any photographer who's out there right now wondering, how can I make this transition, raise my prices, and not be sitting behind my computer for you know 40 hours a week answering all these emails, and what about the workflows? What about all the questions you get asked? Um, and so this was quite simply just my response to the overwhelm and for the amount, the sheer amount of time that it would take you to create all of these resources. And so um, the resources, there are many of them. So go ahead and check them out. I will throw um, the link into the description for you to go ahead and check out when you're finished with this video. But uh, essentially, it starts with a comprehensive checklist for you to go through step by step and make sure that your business is getting off on the right foot, both professionally and legally. This is going to walk you through setting up your domain, when you should go ahead and get your professional email address, when to get your business banking. Every single step is going to walk you through it. There's also some walking you through not just the business setup, but some of the marketing setup because you're going to need to establish some of your social media profiles and you want to do this with some intention and some strategy. And so you get that inside of the guide. Ryan said, this is going to be so helpful. Yes, Ryan, it is available now and it's actually on sale until Friday. So this is a great time to get it for more than 50% off. Stephanie's here in the live chat. She says, yes, I found it. Um, this is going to be such an amazing idea. I am so excited that you're excited about this too, Stephanie. I think I have gotten so many DMs of people saying, this is what I needed when I was starting my business. This is the stuff that I needed because they wasted so much time on the email templates, um, the policies, the brochures, like trying to figure out how do you answer difficult questions? How do you establish boundaries in your business? And what are the workflows? What are the steps for how you design an album? What are the steps for how you set up a CRM? That's what Hobby to Pro Toolkit is all about. And so I just wanted to make this as simplified as possible. So that first checklist is really it's setting up your business. Now, you might go into this checklist and you might have a lot of this stuff already set up, and that's totally fine. If you have been accepting clients for a while, um, maybe you've been shooting for a while, 
you could still benefit from making sure that you have actually checked off all of these boxes so that you are legit and that maybe you'd go back and it's going to give you some confidence in some of the things that you've done, but remind you of some of those missing gaps in your business that you may not be thinking about that are actually costing you leads places that you could be listing your business online, things that you need to be doing legally to make sure that you're set up and that you're not going to end up getting sued or doing something wrong with your clients, right? So that's the first guide. And then you get every email template in my business. So you're going to get all of my wedding and portrait emails um, to answer any questions about whether or not this is strictly for wedding photographers. It's not. I do have portrait photographers buy this because the email templates are basically the only part that's specific to weddings. Um, and all the portrait and um, album creation templates, asking for review templates, getting testimonial templates, all that is in there as well. So just take a little time, make your little tweaks, and they'd be perfect for um, a business for anybody doing basically pictures of people. So if you do family portraits, um, maternity, baby, brand photography, all that kind of stuff, I think that all falls into portraiture. And so this was definitely made with you in mind. So um Okay, Nathaniel said, is this course not for certain people? Yeah, absolutely. I would say if you are profitable, you are full-time, you are established, this is not for you. This is really to help get someone off the ground or even someone who's been doing this for a while but just hasn't seen momentum in their business because they haven't created the systems, the processes, the procedures, and they're not priced for profit. And that is why there's a pricing, um, it's like a, profit pricing guide. And so it's more than just, um, it's more than just equations. Like here's some math. It's more than just mindset. It's like, it's putting all the pieces together for you to both do your cost of doing business analysis, make sure you know your costs, but then also setting yourself for price and understanding the market that you've been priced into. So the profit guide is very important for you to understand your numbers. Um, and that's why, you know, that that really applies to any genre of photography. And anybody else who this would not be for, I would say, this does not work if you are not a service-based photographer. So if you feel like you do a lot of like still lives for commercial companies and you need commercial type stuff, that's not what this is about. This is more for photographers that are solopreneurs who are doing hashtag all the things in their business who need to get streamlined and give an excellent client experience. They need to be able to walk a client through what package to choose, make sure that package is profitable, and then take them through an excellent client experience that might end in a digital gallery, it might end in some prints or an album, and then how exactly to do that step by step. The other couple of guides that were in here are guides that I feel like when I asked myself, what did I need when I was starting out that I didn't really know that I needed? And there are a couple of guides in here. So these might not be the reason why you're like, yes, I need this. But I know nine years into this business or eight or nine, yeah, I'm going on my ninth season, that these were things that I would have needed. And that is a um, policies guide. So deciding what your policies are going to be on all the different nitty gritty aspects of your business. That could be copyright to your images, raw photographs, um, travel policies, black and white versus um, color edits. Uh, what happens if somebody wants to reschedule their photo sessions and then how to articulate that to your clients. So there's an entire policies guide, um, which I really hope just demystifies all these tricky questions that you start to get and then you end up in a Facebook group, like asking people what to do. And then all the advice is contradictory. So it walks you through how to decide on these decisions for you. So I'm not going to tell you this is exactly how you should run your business. I'm going to give you all the information so that you can make an informed decision as the CEO of your photography business and then how to uphold those decisions. Right. Stephanie says this is me all the time. Yes. I mean, and that's still going to happen, right? Like there's going to be questions that we're just like, is this, what do I do with this? And you do want to like crowdsource some information sometimes. So nothing wrong with that. But if you feel like you don't know you, what it, what you should charge for travel, or you feel like you don't know what to say if someone says, can I have the copyright for my images? Um, or if you feel like you don't know what to say when they say, can you Photoshop out this entire building and head swap these two people? And you feel like you should be charging for that, but you don't know how to say it that's what this policy guide is for. So you get the policies guide. 
And then you also get a business boundaries and work-life balance guide. And this was actually one of my favorite guides to create because this is something that I think when you jump into your own business, you're excited to work in it. So you work in it a lot, but then you start to realize that you're always working. Your phone is technically connecting you to your clients 24 seven, it feels like. And your email is something that's just creeping in all the time. Either you're ignoring it all together and the number is like growing. It's like ding, 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 like just the clock is climbing or you're always in your inbox. And then you're wondering how people have time to blog and do all these other things in their businesses if they're doing the admin. And so that's why I created the, the boundaries guide and the work-life balance guide. So it's really going to walk you through not only setting up a schedule for yourself that's going to help you to um, really establish when those hours are that you're going to work, but then there's some tools in there for how to maintain your boundaries, uphold those boundaries, and communicate them, which is key, to your clients so that they know when they can reach you or how they can reach you um, or what's an appropriate uh, like platform to really be discussing any of the questions that they might have. And so I really enjoyed making that guide. I think that for longevity in your business, for not burning out in five minutes, we really have to be thinking about building a business that supports the life that we want. You know, whether that is something that we're doing part time um, that is making us money, that is profitable while also raising children or working a day job or going to school. I know that I have, you know, students in this who are doing all different things, but they want the, the one common denominator is that they want to make sure that this business is something that is scalable, that serves their life, that doesn't drain them, um, and that they can avoid burnout at all costs. And I think that especially the past few years, with everything that's been going on in the world, so many photographers are burnt out. And some of that is just craziness and it's unavoidable. And some of it, though, is avoidable. And there are some things that we can do to build systems and boundaries and support the life that we want and the business that we want as well. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, throw them in the comment box. I'm going to continue to unpack a little bit more of what is inside with sharing two more resources from Hobby to Pro Toolkit. Again, if you're just jumping in right now, Hobby to Pro Toolkit is essentially my answer to the overwhelm of having a photography hobby, really wanting to shift that hobby into something profitable and professional, and just feeling like there's just so many things that are missing in your business, email templates, brochures, guides, profitable pricing, um, answering the difficult questions. And then there's also the files. So I will jump into that. So I have a guide in here that is called, um, it's, I think I called it the image backup and data loss prevention guide. And this is quite simply going to walk you through what you should be doing from the moment you basically before you shoot your sessions all the way through to long-term high resolution storage of your images. What are you going to do in between? How can we have redundancies? How can we back up our images? What tools am I using? What kind of hard drives? What kind of subscriptions? Um, what can we do that are that is going to make it nigh to impossible for us to ever lose an image ever again? And then just for keeping our sanity, there's a section on how I set up my catalogs in Lightroom and my naming conventions as well, because as you start to go pro in your photography business, it can get quite overwhelming. You have a lot of files to manage, and I wanna make sure that you're able to go back you know, five years from now and find a wedding that somebody might say, hey, do you have this image of my grandparent? They may have passed away. I lost my files, can you get it for me? And that you'd be able to get that in five minutes to them because you know exactly where they are. Okay. Um, Rebecca, how do you tell people you cannot do things for free? You tell them, I cannot do things for free. You say, I would love to work with you. This sounds very exciting. You hear all about what is happening and what they want. And then you send them a brochure and you offer to hop on a call. When you operate like a business owner and you own that confidence and you say, these are my prices, People get to decide that's up to them whether or not they say yes or no. It's not up to us whether or not somebody wants to pay us. It's just up to us to maintain that confidence in our pricing and in our boundaries and say, I would love to work with you. You actually sound like a great client for me, if that's true. Here's my pricing and here's my availability and here's the next step you can take to book me. That's what I would do. I would turn it around um, and let them know. And if it's somebody that you've worked with before in the past that you may have photographed them for free, you can even say, hey, 
I've loved photographing you and your family before as a part of my portfolio expansion. I am proud to have a full you know, range of offerings now in my business, and I'm happy to send you pricing. What's a good email address for you? And if they decide that they don't want to pay anything, totally fine. That's on them. But then you have gracefully turned it and said, I am now charging real prices in my business. I am now a professional in my business. Um, And I think that having some of these email templates, making sure that the workflows and the systems in your business are dialed in on the back end is going to increase your confidence tenfold. Because when you have this stuff dialed in, you feel like you're ready to go to the next level. And if if not just ready, you feel like it is absolutely essential for you to go to the next level because you really believe in what you're doing. Okay. Rebecca followed up with, I just feel like if I don't keep doing free sessions, I'm going to have no business. I'm going to be really real with you. Doing free sessions is not business. Business is making money. And we have to have cash flow in our businesses. Cash flow is actually the number one reason that businesses fail. Not talent, not drive, not confidence, not anything. You could be a phenomenal photographer and your business can fail because you do not have cash flow. And so cash flow is something that we have to start taking really seriously as small business owners that we are. Even though we are photographers and we are creatives and we might be good at what we do and it might come naturally to us, we have to profit from our work. So doing free sessions is probably not leading to a whole lot of paying business for you. And if it is leading to paying business for you, then you're ready to stop doing free sessions and embrace profit right now in your business. I think you should only do free sessions as long as it takes for you to get the portfolio so that you can prove this is my work. It's beautiful. Now it's time to get paid Um, because you're always going to have people that want free sessions. And that's not exactly an indicator of whether or not for success, I guess I should say, you know, like just because somebody is willing to, you know, drive to me for a free session doesn't necessarily mean that it's growing my business, if that makes sense. There's always going to be those people that want a free session. Okay, let's see. We have lots of questions about free sessions. Um, Is doing something for free uh, for a very broke friend for free? Okay. He was fired due to COVID and he wants family pictures. Okay, let me be clear. You are in charge of your business. Absolutely. If you want to gift somebody in your family or that you know and love with photographs, I would gift it to them. But I would make it clear that your prices are here and you would like to gift it to them. Number one, use a contract. Always use a contract, even if no money is exchanged. Number two, that could still lead to business, but make sure that it's clear that you're not just saying, I don't charge, I'm I'm on the side, I'm a hobbyist. Like, Give the impression that you have a rate, but you're gifting them with free photographs. And that's your generosity. And you can always do that. That's absolutely fine. Um, and I still do that for some of my friends. I will take headshots for some of my friends if I love them and I feel like doing it. I'm going to bless someone with free photography. And I do that frequently. Um, I'll even exchange photographs for other photographers. We'll shoot each other's families. Um, but we both strongly respect what the other is doing. And I think that's the bottom line here is that you just want to make sure that It's clear what you're doing in that exchange, even if there's no money exchange, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, Let's see. Oh, so many questions here, guys. And we still need to wrap up from today. But guys, let me say, before I jump into the next question, that Friday at midnight, the price for Hobby to Pro Toolkit is going to go up. It is more than 50% off right now. Everything we've talked about here in this video today is included in the guide and more, and it's $97. So I've seen just email templates that cost more than $97. So I will tell you that I, with confidence in a straight face, that this is an absolutely phenomenal deal for you and that the price is going up. Okay, next question. Rebecca says, yeah, I have invested almost $5,000 into my business. I do get paid sessions, but if I want to basically look like I'm staying busy, I have to do free ones as well. Interesting. I don't think that's true. I think I would ask you why you can't use some of these old sessions, why you can't blog and create content and do show work and show other aspects of your business and what goes into your business in order to show value. Um, I don't think that the only way to garner respect from somebody is to be super, super busy. That's actually the illusion of busy. We constantly think, you know, 
the only success is busyness. And that's not true. That's actually going to lead you to burnout. The most successful photographers I know are not shooting every single day of the week. They know that they have a cap, they have a limit, there's an amount of clients that they can shoot, and then they charge appropriately and then shoot those clients, right? So I would challenge you to think of other ways that you could create compelling and magnetic content. I have the section inside of the course is social media marketing, and there are actually some tools in there that it's going to help you, I think, leverage social media, attracting in the clients that are going to be good for you without taking on lots and lots of free shoots. Because if you're doing free shoots, you're probably really busy and backlogged with editing and planning and driving and the back and forth, all for things that aren't necessarily making you any money. And if it's free, it's making you nothing. It's actually costing you money. Um, and all that time that you could be doing other forms of organic marketing in your business. So I would just challenge you to um, limit those free sessions quite a bit. And if you're going to be doing free, I would do a stylized shoot and make sure that you're getting published, make sure you're getting shared by other vendors, make sure you're really getting the mileage out of those shoots if they're going to be free. Okay, Manny says, where do I need to go to purchase it? Um, you can go actually to my site. I'll throw the link right here. It's joymichelle.co slash hobby to pro toolkit. Um, it's linked over on my Instagram. It's linked here in the chat and it's linked in the description of this video. Yes, Raven says, thanks for clearing that up. You're welcome. I hope this is helpful, guys. The last thing that I wanted to mention that is inside of the toolkit is your workflows. And so workflows are just going to be your set of repeatable steps so that you don't have to think so hard when it's time to design an album. It's time to onboard a new client um, or to gather a review or a testimonial. You don't have to sit there at your keyboard, uh, like at your computer with just the blinking cursor and you're thinking, how do I ask this person to write me a five-star review on Google? How do I ask this person um, what their choices are for the album? Because like, come on, time is of the essence. Or how do I follow up with them and make sure that they got their images or that they know that their gallery is only active for one year? And then, of course, not write the same emails over and over again, right? Because you want to make sure that if you're writing something that you've written before, you're working from a template always. Because you're only one person, right? Like for the, for the you know, mass of us, I think most of us are working in our businesses, just us. So it's really crucial to be working smarter and creating templates and systems to work from in our business. And that's where the workflow section comes in. So the workflow is going to walk you through your process for ordering, creating and collaborating on an album, onboarding a client, getting your testimonials, and then um, things like gathering um, the questionnaire, maybe before a portrait session or before the wedding, whichever it may be, um, and things like that. And so just being able to see it at a bird's eye view and look at all the steps as well as the softwares that I use in my business, I think can be helpful to fill those gaps. And you might see, okay, actually I'm making this more difficult than it needs to be. Or there's an email template for that. And I don't need to reinvent how to ask for a favor every time. Or maybe you're not following up with a strategic um plan for the a lot of the leads in your business. So if you feel like you're getting leads, but most of them don't get back to you at all, this could be a great place for you to fill some of those gaps in your process for following up and making sure that you're leading strong with, you know, putting your best foot forward as a professional. Okay. Um, okay. I, I saw some comments, but it looks like you guys are just talking amongst yourselves. So Hobby to Pro Toolkit, very excited about it. Already have a slew of new students inside of it. Um, I, one of my students yesterday, Danielle, sent me a DM and she said she's been following me for a really long time. She's done some of the free stuff on my YouTube channel, gotten some results, but she was blown away by the toolkit. She was saying, this is a game changer. This is going to give me confidence. Um, and she called out especially the balance, the work-life balance part. And I, that really spoke to me because that was something that I needed in my business in the beginning. And I wasn't sure if that would be the reason why people wanted to invest, but it was a standout guide for her. Um, and you know, she was still going through, was still picking all the different templates and downloads and checklists and digging into it. Um, but I'm just, I'm thrilled to see so many people coming into this and how it's going to change their businesses in so many ways. So Thank you guys so much. Um, you can get the guide for $97 until, well, Saturday, and then it's going over. So Friday at midnight, and then the price is going up. So if you have any questions, if you're trying to figure out if this is going to be a good fit for you, um, or if you 
Um, just any questions about the guide really and like the format of this toolkit, send me a DM or send me an email. I answer either one. I always answer my DMs. Um, so even if you just want to say, hey, I'm happy to chat and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and if you're not in the Facebook group, Photo Boss, which I think most of you are, but if you're not in Photo Boss Facebook group, um, definitely join um, because we are doing lots of cool stuff in that group now. There are different live streams happening. I'm going to have some guest speakers coming up and that's where you get first view, I should say, or like the behind the scenes sneaks at new products that are coming out um, and ways to work together. So I do have very, very limited one-to-one -one coaching um, opportunities right now. I'm pretty capped out and I have to like make some room and offboard some of my old clients before I can open it back up. But I always offer my coaching spots to that Facebook group. So be sure to join Photo Boss and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me here live. And again, if you're in the replay, throw your questions in the comment section. I will definitely circle back. I'll see you guys. Bye.